true. All right. Well, Milwaukee was listening to us. Bucks President Peter Fagan offering us a tour of the city. Let me just say this. Milwaukee, a great city, great people, passionate fan base that supports their teams rally together. They deserve a winner, and they may have a championship in these Bucks. So I would like to take up Peter Fagan on the tour. Dear District, here I come. I'd love to go. Stephen A., I know you agree with a lot of this, but I want to know, is there anything that you would like to add? I'd like to add that I want the city of Milwaukee to grow the hell up. Stop being so damn sensitive. Let me be very, very clear. The arena, Pfizer Arena, is a first-class arena. That's what the Milwaukee Bucks franchise needed in order for them to stay in that city. Because if they hadn't built the new arena, the owners were going to leave and the NBA was going to force them to leave, okay? That's a matter of record, all right? The fans there, outstanding. Great fan base, great people. I got a lot of friends there. One of my best friends is Gary D. Howard, the former executive sports editor for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel for over uh, for damn near two decades there. One of the first things I did when I went to his house is I said, what the hell are you doing here? Why would you be here? It's freezing. I said nothing about the people. I said nothing about the fans. I said nothing about the arena, which is first class. They got this kind of L.A. Live Midwest field there. That's well, absolutely fantastic. I was given a tour of that place. It was beautiful. The fans, the fan base, the quality of their team, all of that stuff is first class. And I love the people. And I got friends within the Milwaukee Bucks organization. But mm -hmm. forgive me. If I don't like cold weather, I've spoken against Chicago. I've spoken against Minneapolis. I said, I, I asked my boy, uh, you know, in his church, I said, how could you do that to them? Having them in freezing behind Minneapolis, okay? Everybody knows that. I've spoken against cold weather cities all the time, and damn it, I ain't apologizing, and I'm not changing. I never said anything against the city, and you got these reporters oh, and you. other people got getting all caught up in their emotions. Because I don't like cold weather, I spoke against Detroit too because of the cold i don't like cold weather oh, I can tell and you, i'm not Stephen apologizing and Molly, for it both yeah. of you yeah. as a native native milwaukeean is that what it's called i grew up on the corner of pete vukovich boulevard and ray so showed me at his work what i needed to do to be successful in milwaukee and i've made it all the way to first take and i won't let you besmirch my city's name Yes, never it's meant cold. to offend. We never meant That's to all. offend anybody. It's just Great a joke that Stephen A. Like he makes. You know, you have one guy who's a little over six feet and one guy who's six foot eight, and they're both great. Take the six foot eight dude. Know why? The basket's ten feet in the air. Luca has a chance to be the best player in basketball before too long. In fact, even at, KD played out of his mind, right? And so I don't think Luca. You, you have to like the way KD played last better even than the way Luca played last. But, like, Luca's one of those guys where if LeBron's crown is in dispute because he got hurt and we don't know, Luca's one of the guys in the conversation right now. Is Trey? I don't think quite. I like Luca. I don't blame you for that, but I would say I would say to you, we can't summarily dismiss the notion that Trey Young ain't worth that either. Numbers are similar in the postseason. And here's the advantage that Trey does have, Max. He doesn't have baggage. Luca, officiating, tied. Uh, I, I forgot who was with, who was with with the most technicals in the league this year. Um, you got that going on. You got a coach in Rick Carlisle that walked away from Luka Doncic. You got a general manager that was there for 24 years that's no longer there. And you're hearing rumbling. Breaking news into first take this morning. Rick Carlisle didn't have to wait long for a new job, fellas. Listen to this. Tim McMahon reporting. The Pacers are hiring Rick Carlisle as head coach. He will sign a four-year deal. $29 million. Stephen A., what do you think about the Pacers picking up Carlisle? Well, let me say this. Um, I'm happy for him. Um, you know, I've known Greg Carlisle for many years. Um, I think he's an exceptional coach. Um, I do think it was time for a new voice in Dallas. I think he knew that, which is why he departed. My personal opinion, I haven't had an opportunity to speak to him yet, Molly, about this, to congratulate yeah. him. Uh, because him and his wonderful wife and his family, uh, I know they love Indiana, and so uh, that's great for him. But what I would tell you is that when I think about Rick Carlisle in Indiana, I actually had aspirations for him to end up in Milwaukee. I thought that if Budenholzer lost, that the perfect coach for Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks would have been Rick Carlisle. That was my personal opinion. I look at the roster. 
even though I like Sabonis a lot and you got Brogdon, who I'm a fan of, and and Miles Turner, and now you got Karis LeVert. They've got some, they got some legitimate pieces on, on Indiana that can make some noise. But championship caliber noise, I don't know if I see that. It remains to be seen. So what happened? You know, when he coached them for four years, I think it was from 2003 to 2007, took them to the players the first three years, the conference finals the first year, semifinals the second year, first round the third year, and then obviously they missed the players the fourth year. So you were sliding this way, but that's neither here nor there. In the end, it's a, it's, it's a nice location for him. I can understand why he would take that job. I certainly understand why they are hiring him uh, because he obviously used to coach there before and knows the town, knows the fan base, knows what it means to them the whole bit, and he was an assistant under Bird there as well. Uh, it's a great choice by the Indiana Pacers. I just like to see you know my buddy in a, in a, in a better situation talent-wise in terms of having championship-caliber players. I like Brogdon a lot. I like Sabonis and all of them. Whether or not they can legitimately compete for a championship is my question mark about them right now. Yeah, mine too. And it's an interesting choice for Rick Carlisle, Stephen A., who would seem to have options. You know, not only with, like, you look at the work with Dallas, right? But I always think of that Pistons team in 04 that Larry Brown took over and then they got Rasheed Wallace. And I always thought of it as a Rick Carlisle team um, because he was getting close. Um, He's an excellent coach, probably the best coach in the history of, like, the Dallas Mavericks, right? Probably the best coach in franchise history, championship, and everything. And the Pacers are the kind of team where, like, you look at the draft lottery and you think to yourself, at least I was thinking yesterday, there's a team that really needs to get lucky in the draft lottery because they're well run enough, at least they're successful enough, where they're normally not picking up at the top of the class, so they're not getting these great prospects um, because they're not among the worst teams in basketball. And But they're also not a free agent destination. It's not a warm weather city. It's not a major co- cosmopolitan destination. It's not a tax-free state where they're attracting top-notch free agents. So it, it's almost they're, 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 they're cursed by their own competence in a way. They're, they're, they're competitive and they're good enough to never be great. You would think Rick Carlisle would want a situation where there's potential greatness, but maybe he sees something in their near future that I don't. And in, Indy in, in meant to them. And, you know, he and I go back. Back a long, long ways. And I know how much they love that area and what have you. That's so great. I think right. it was that just as personal it. as much as it was professional. Great to hear. Glad it worked out. All right. Two superstars returned from injury. Former coach and Michael Jordan's former teammate had this to say. He's the most talented basketball player on earth, uh, if not of all time, honestly. Um, he's just so gifted. He played with Michael Jordan. And, and, and I know. KD's, I, know. Right I think he's more gifted. I really do. I mean, it, that's saying something, but Kevin is a different, entirely different breed. I mean, 6'11 with guard skills unlimited three-point range it's just stunning and watching him this year was um, really really gratifying